United States, Port Hill, Idaho. Oh, my phone's not charging either. I wonder if I blew a fuse. Because it was working yesterday. I'll have to check that. I'll move my uh, charging stuff over. How's it going? What's your flight number, state or province? Where are you coming from? So I came out the top of Washington on a back road route. So it was the uh, Nighthawk exit. How long were you at the beginning One day, basically overnight. Where's home for you? Colorado. What do you do for work? Uh, this actually, so YouTube stuff, off-road and that kind of stuff. What's your, uh, what's your, uh, Instagram. Uh, Meerkat ADV. Perfect. We had a girl the other day, Itchy Boots girl. Oh, she came through here? Yeah, I know. I know who she is. She's She's got like a million followers. I'm not nearly that popular. Yeah, she's got some cool stuff. I figured she was around here by now. This is navigation, and then that's just a rear-facing camera, yeah. You got this one here. Yep. Very cool. Good luck. So, you. all right, thank you. Take care. Itchy Boots just came through. That's great. Good job, Norley. Twelve seconds later. Okay, so the battery died. That's why it's dead. Whatever. I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. See if it'll charge. Welcome to the Idaho BDR, and I'm going down here. Yield to aircraft, that's funny. All right, as far as I know, the first bit of this is gonna be really chill. The uh, Idaho BDR is considered one of the easiest. I think the only one that's really considered easier is the Mid-Atlantic, and my biggest issues are basically just going to come down to whether I can get through because of snow and tree fall. Yeah, 107 miles to Clark Fork. That's what it's called. That was what I couldn't remember. And there are a bunch of alternates to go up that way and basically get to like campgrounds and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. And when I was looking at it, I actually realized that one of those campgrounds is very close to Ruby Ridge. Which, is it, which if you don't know what Ruby Ridge is, look it up. Um, there was a standoff there between basically the ATF and a family. And they really f***ed it up, the ATF and the FBI, because they the FBI responded to assist the ATF. And yeah, it was, it was just a bad situation. It was not handled very well. It was around the same time as Waco. Which, if you don't know what Waco is, look that up too, because that was a mess also. But yeah, should get to Clark Fork this afternoon, and the goal will be to stay there for two nights. So I can get a day off, do some laundry, take care of some stuff, and then just continue to work my way south. I'm doing well in terms of schedule. No real concerns there. But yeah, welcome to the Panhandle of Idaho. It is really beautiful up here. And it's about as far north in the country as you can go. These last couple of days have been a lot of fun. That was a great group of guys for the Washington BDR. It was nice to finally get to ride with some folks. And there was some stuff that was challenging enough that I was very happy to have people with me. Idaho, I don't really expect anything to be too challenging to where I need assistance. It's, it really is just going to come down to whether or not there's snow blocking my way or a bunch of trees down or something like that. I, I know there are sections of it that have not been reported to be open yet. And so we're just going to have to kind of take it as it comes. The Idaho BDR is the longest BDR. It's a little bit over 1,200 miles long. And so I expect it to take me... Ooh, bunny. 
at least a week, if not longer. Alright, let's find a spot to pull over. I'm gonna swap the batteries and the cameras. See if I can get both of them working. It's charging off the battery pack, running off the battery pack basically. And we're recording. I'm already less than 100 miles from Clark Fork. So I should be able to get there pretty quickly. Over the river and through the woods. Except I ain't going to grandma's house. Up to about 80. I have to assume it's probably gonna be fairly warm today. I can't tell if anybody has like a yield or anything. It looks like it's just an uncontrolled day of a yield. Everybody else just has like, go for it. <laughs> Good luck. This is all super pretty. Idaho is supposed to be one of the most beautiful BDRs. I mean, all the BDRs are designed to highlight the beauty of the state that they're in. I mean, the Washington BDR was stunning. God. So far, I would call it my favorite. Oh, wait, I... S oh, my... Oh, no. I need to look at my foot. I, well, crap, I wasn't recording. So I did pass someone on what looked like a 300 rally to like earlier today with luggage. That might have been Norley. Yeah, I waved at her. She waved back. <laughs> That's funny. All right, here's dirt. One of the things I do have to be conscious of now is this is grizzly bear country. So when I am camping, I will be much more conscious about food and smells in general. And yeah, other than that, I mean, all the stuff I normally do. I do have bear spray. I will be having it in my tent with me. And I have it on the bike just behind my right hip. Well, hopefully Norley was able to do some of the Idaho BDR. If she came through Port Hill, she hopefully did. So I'll have to keep an eye out for her videos. Right now, according to her videos, she's still in Mexico. But then again, according to my videos, I'm in New Mexico. So that's the nature of making videos in advance to be released later on. <laughs> But yeah, congratulations, Norley, you made it to Canada. God, look at that. But yeah, so five days straight of riding, and I'll have, well, I guess this is day six, actually. And then I'll have tomorrow off. National Wildlife Refuge, huh? Kootenini? I don't know how to say it. It's probably right. I think on this stuff I'm just going to keep recording because there's no reason to turn the cameras off when I'm on pavement. Ooh, I am I'm a little tired today. Not going to lie. Six days of riding in a row, especially when five of them were fairly difficult in a lot of places is tiring and yeah I am tired all right well I'm gonna turn these off and I will turn them back on when I'm leaving Park River one winner later sure that's still on oh I got 58 more miles well Idaho you're already living up to expectations I was here for maybe 30 minutes. I had my sandwich and my drink. And I had one nice guy come up and talk to me about the Tenere because he was curious about them and looking at getting one. And then I had another guy who I think just wanted to talk. But that included 
gas prices and how the government controls the weather through the HARP project in Alaska. He's like, yeah, you ever heard of that? They, they use that to control the weather. I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what that is and it's not a thing. All right, 57 more miles to Clark Fork. I was really kind of just looking for a chill day anyway, so this is perfect. Peak. All right. Well, alrighty, Fern Gully. Let's do this thing. Idyllic is probably the best way to describe this bit. Looks like a lot of postcards, all strung out one after the other. That's what I want to see. Narrow, winding roads. This is normally what people are seeing at the end of the Idaho BDR, but it's a pretty damn nice start, too. Grizzly country, yep. I wouldn't mind seeing one, preferably from a distance. Hello. Damn. <laughs> that splashed off the bottoms of my hands. I got a little bit, my face got just a little bit wet. I wonder if I got the camera or not. <laughs> Miniature tree tunnels. This is super pretty. Reminds me a lot of Colorado. Up above 5,000 feet already. Yeah, it cooled off nicely. 77 degrees. That feels great. Don't expect to be up at this altitude for all that long. I know I dropped back down for Clark Fork. Deer in the road. Probably not gonna be able to see them. There goes one. And they ran straight up the hill into the bushes. <laughs> all right, I just saw two. That's a bear. That's a bear in the road. It's a black bear. Hi, buddy. Yeah, you go on and get up the hill. And I'm just gonna... Yeah, you go up the hill. Just one, it looks like. And it was an adult. So I'm not too worried about cubs. Hi. Bye. <laughs> God, I never see bears in Colorado unless I'm hiking, it seems like. I see one in Idaho on the first day. Okay, so how can you tell a black bear from a brown bear, which is a grizzly? So that was a black bear, and they are typically smaller. They have basically like a flat back and kind of rounded ears, and I don't know, they're just, they're kind of a more rounded appearance, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And then a grizzly bear has basically like a hump in their back. They tend to be much larger. They have kind of pointier ears and are just generally much larger. They have a different walk to them too. You can't really base it off of color because black bears can range any, I mean, they, there's friggin' blonde ones out there. We had a bear in Breckenridge that was named Cinnamon because that's what it looked like. I mean, it, it was the color of cinnamon. 
But yeah, so th so their actual coloration is not match their names necessarily. Because grizzly bears can also vary in color quite widely. I mean, it's just like hair color and people. There don't tend to be very many... I don't know if I've ever heard of a black grizzly bear. There, They might exist. I've just never heard of one. Um, but there's definitely some like super dark brown ones. There you go. Saw a bear within a couple of hours of entering Idaho. The other thing is, so black bears are about as harmless as they get. You know, as soon as it saw me, it ran off. I've never had a black bear really be aggressive, but uh, grizzlies can be quite aggressive. and I think a 1090. Laundry mat directly next door. Oh, that's friggin' lucky. Okay. I'll go right here for now. Alright, I'll see you in the room. Or sometime later.